And drum roll. Now we are on sixth grade math lesson 2.7, dividing the fractions finally. 2.5 and 2.6 just kind of got our brains all prepared for that. And here we go on how to do the steps to divide them. And I think once you see those steps and practice those steps a few times, you guys are gonna be like, oh, that makes total sense. So um, I think that it would be fairly easy with practice. So um, they do show us a number line way first and I'll go ahead and show that. Um, but then they go into the steps of, of um, reciprocal and inverse um, of the fraction. So, and that's the tool I generally use. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you through that. So they start off with the number line version, two thirds divided by one six, and it's gonna feel a lot like the modeling lesson of 2.5 where they had the candy bars and such. Only now they're doing that as a number line zero and one, and as we know, fractions are the in-betweens. Um, we'll split it into the two, to the thirds first into three equal pieces for this denominator. And those are equal pieces so I have one two three two dashes gave me the three sections the sections are what we're talking about and we have two out of those three so I'm going to kind of connect this one two out of those three so this is the section we're talking about out of the whole one and what they want us to do is say how many one six pieces does it take to make that amount well, I'm not cutting this into six. I'm taking, I'm finding out how many one six pieces it takes to make that. So the first thing I need to do is cut zero to one into six even pieces. Six even pieces, we'll use blue. So we're splitting this into six. One, two, th one, two, three, four. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces. How many one sixths does it take to fill two thirds? One, two, three, four. So this kind of feels like more of that modeling of the uh, division, but it was good for you guys to see one more time. Now let's go on to something that's cool to recognize. Okay, something that's cool to know that gives us a really simple way, because who wants to draw number lines for every division problem and cut them up into pieces all the time? There's gotta be an easier way, Miss Sanchez. There's gotta be, and you're right, there is. Um, but we have to understand these pieces to know why this works. So there's something that they call the reciprocal. And so I'm gonna talk to you about where that comes from. So let's say I have two thirds. If I flip two thirds up on its head, that's called its reciprocal, three over two instead, the inverse or opposite, then, um, and I multiply those straight across, I'm gonna get two times three is six, and three times two is six, six divided by six is one. I'm gonna get one. So, um, so those are called, this flipped version, this flipped version of that is called the reciprocal or the inverse. So we can use that well, watch what happens when this shows up. So I wanna point out to you, they've done some division. Watch this, it's cool. They've done some division. Four divided by, or sorry, four sevenths divided by two sevenths equals two. They did the division for us, so we didn't have to. They're telling us, hey, by the way, these are the answers. Watch this, it's too cool. All right, so then they did four sevenths times and they did the reciprocal, the inverse of two sevenths. They flipped it on its head. Let's see what answer we get, right? So we are going to cross reduce. Um, reduction here, well, seven divides evenly into both of those, so that's nice and handy. Uh, seven goes into seven once and into seven once. And here, let's check that reduction. Oh yeah, two goes into both of those. Two goes into two once and two goes into four two times. Multiply straight across, two times one is two, and one times one is one, and so two divided by one is two, and da-da, what? 
what just happened? Did you do magic? I mean, keep in mind, we've got a division problem, 4 divided by 7, divided by a division problem, 2 divided by 7. And so we can use the magic of reciprocals, flip the second fraction on his head, his reciprocal, change that division to multiply because we undid some division so we can undo some division. And here we are with the same answer. That can't work again. There's no way. All right, well, let's try it out. So here we had 5, 6 divided by 4, 6 equals 5 fourths. We keep this first decimal or fraction the same, 5, 6. Change division to multiply. Take the 4, 6 and flip him over. We're using his reciprocal. Flip him over, 6 over 4 instead. And now we'll just use our multiplication steps. Let's see if it works. I have uh, cross reduce. Uh, 6 goes into 6 both. Those, so those are both 6s, so let's reduce that down. 6 goes into 6 once. 6 goes into 6 once. Easy. 5 and 4, is there any number other than 1 that can go evenly into 5 and also in 4? Uh, no. Nope. So now just keep going. Multiply straight across. 5 times 1 is 5. 1 times 4 is 4. Check it out. Worked again. Uh, third time, do you think third time's a charm? We're going to work again. 1 third divided by 5 nines equals 3 fifths. If we keep this first one the same, change division to multiply and flip this 5 nines to use the reciprocal 9 fifths, will we get the same answer? Let's cross reduce first. 3 divides evenly into both 3 and 9. 3 divides into 3 one time. 3 divides into 9 three times. Cross reduce 1 fifth if possible. No, nothing other than 1 goes into 1, so it's not going to change anything, so leave it the same. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 5 is 5. And hello, looky there. So I can use all my multiply rules to divide. The only thing I need to take care of first is keep the first fraction the same. Change division to multiply. Flip the second fraction on his head. Use his reciprocal. Keep, change, flip. K-C-F, like Kentucky chicken fried. It's a little backwards because reciprocals, whatever. Kentucky chicken fried. K keep, change, flip. All right, so let's take a look at those steps for dividing with fractions. I got to write this down. It's in your notes, too, by the way. If you print it off your notes, it's there. Um, change everything to a fraction. That's familiar. That's what we were doing for multiplication. If it was a whole number, we put a 1 under. If it was a mixed number, we multiplied, added, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a new step. Divide, do the... Um, for division, do the reciprocal. That was that KCF. Keep the first fraction. Change division to multiply and flip the um, second fraction to the reciprocal of that. Then we go to step three, cross reduce. That's the same as multiply. Then multiply straight across. That's the same as multiply. Then convert, if it was an improper fraction, back into a mixed number by dividing bottom into top. Remainder is the numerator. Uh, and reduce the fractions if needed. That's the same as multiply. All these steps Number one, number three, number four, number five were the same as multiply. Just the KCF was the only change from multiply to divide. That's it. So if you were starting to feel pretty confident on multiply, then there's not much change for divide. Good news. The only issue, uh, the only big mistake I see on this is that people get it all good at this, all these steps, and they can do these really well. And then they'll see a multiplication problem and want to KCF that. So if it's already a multiply, we can skip this step. We don't need to do that for multiply. We just need to turn mul uh, divisions into multiply by doing that step. So let's look at an example. If I have three fourths divided by one twelfth. I don't need no number lines. I don't need to draw candy bars and pizzas. I am going to do my steps. Change to fractions. Both are fractions. I'm good to go. Keep, change, flip. Keep three fourths the same. Change division to multiply. Flip through the reciprocal of one twelfth, which is twelve over one cross reduce. I have 4 and a 12 here. 4 divides 
equally into both of those, so I'm gonna use that. Four goes into four once, four goes into 12 three times. Uh, cross reduction here, no can do, that's a one, so it's not gonna change anything. Then I will multiply straight across. Three times three is nine. One times one is one. Convert it or reduce it. Well, that nine divided by one is simply nine. My answer is nine, I'm done. It will be, uh, if I take three-fourths on the number line and I chopped it, uh, the whole amount into 12 equal pieces, it would take nine of those 12s to build three-fourths. That's what the answer is saying. Um, so that's it, that's the steps. I know, want another example? Let's do another example. Okay, five, six, have a candy bar left. I'm dividing it amongst three people. We've got to share that equally and fairly. Um, let's go ahead and do the math. Change to a fraction. This is a fraction, this is not, so let's just put a one under it so that it is. It's division, let's do that keep change flip to make it multiplication. Then we are on cross reduction if we can do any. Uh, one and six, nothing goes in other than one. Three and five, no, three does not fit into five equally, so no, we're not cross reducing there this time. Sometimes we can't, it's okay. Multiply straight across. Five times one is five. Six times three is 18. Convert if it's improper, it's not. That snowman is standing straight up. He's not upside down, he's proper. Um, reduce if you can. There's nothing that goes into both 5 and 18 equally, so I'm as reduced as I can get. Everybody is going to, oh, those three people are getting 5 18ths of a candy bar of the 5 6 that was left. So, answer 5 18ths. Hopefully, you're starting to feel good about this with some practice. It's going to be automatic. Um, good luck. Good luck, and seek help from me if you need it.